The time has come. Joe Shane, step into the office for me real quick. Step into the office. You see the title. You see the thumbnail. It's time to talk about Joe Shane, y'all. I think he's on the hot seat. Time is running out. And with the way this team is headed in the third year of this regime, when the team is supposed to continue to improve and potentially be making a playoff run, here we are, bottom of the NFC East, with one of the worst rosters in the league and one of the worst performances that we see week in and week out. We have to talk about it. Let's jump straight into it. First off with Joe Shane, right? You know, sit here and tell me that he's a great drafter. Go ahead and run me through some of the draft picks that he's made. Let's, let's flip the clicker on to 2022. See a lot of guys here. First time in this regime, first year. You got to hit on some certain picks. You got two first round picks. Kayvon Thibodeau, as of now, he's been solid. He's definitely continuing to ascend. Evan Neal is going to go down as one of the worst picks that this Giants team has made in a long time. Evan Neal is a bust. On a team that the offensive line has been continuing to struggle, Joe Shane was tasked with fixing this offensive line. They draft a layup in Evan Neal, who's supposed to be a top pick, and this guy is not even playable at this point. Your left tackle goes down in Andrew Thomas, and he's out for the year. Something that has been happening for us the past couple years. We have no insurance plan for our left tackle position. We sign a swing tackle in Illuminor. And we can't even flex him to left tackle to start Evan Neal at right tackle. Instead, in the same draft class, we're starting a, a, a third rounder in Josh Tzudu, who was drafted as a guard. Drafted as a guard. That's the key point to this. Drafted as a guard is flexed out to left tackle. And as you know, Josh Tzudu already got Daniel Jones hurt with that neck injury. And then on top of that, he's starting a left tackle for us again. And now we're out here you know, signing people or trying to sign people that are coming off of ACL tears and Hubbard from the former Cardinals. Like, this is what we have to resort to. Joe Shane, you missed on Evan Neal. You missed on Josh Zudu. Cordell Flott, probably not starting on other teams. And here he is for us. And has he been great? By all means, he has not. Daniel Bellinger had a promising rookie season. Phased out of the game plan at this point. Dane Belton, should be an impact player at the safety position, especially in the fourth round of this draft. Dane Belton does not see the field that much. He comes in when someone gets hurt. And at this point, you know, the, the first two years, he, he made some turnovers, but Dane Belton hasn't been too much on this team. Mike McFadden is the one to two stars that we'll see in these draft classes for Joe Shane that we have to give him credit for. Mike McFadden has been a good player, especially in round five. But that's why we look at the guys that are drafted ahead of him and they're not impacting the way that Mike McFadden is. It's worrisome. We have to talk about it. This guy is missing on some draft picks and he can't play for these guys, but these guys have to play for him and they're not doing it. Whether it's coaching, whether it's the actual player's ability, whether it's actually just selecting the player in general, this team is not good. DJ Davison, rotational piece. Marcus McKeithen, cut gone finito darren beaver cut gone finito 2022 we have all these draft picks and not a lot of them are impacting this team once again year three this is when the development is really supposed to already kick in they're supposed to already get you know used to playing in the nfl and continue to make plays for this team but yet we're only walking away with two impact players two to three wando robinson i didn't touch on him i, I believe the jury's still out on him I think we kind of overrate him a bit at this point. He's dropped a lot of crucial third downs, and uh, he's shifty and all, but we haven't seen it all together. I'm going to be honest. That might be overly critical. We haven't seen it all together. Flip the clicker to 2023. You trade up one pick for Deontay Banks in the first round. Banks, the jury's still out on him. He's been showing a lack of effort this year. That's not on Joe Shane, but Deontay Banks hopefully can continue to develop a bit. John Michael Schmitz hasn't been terrible. You know, he's going to continue to make plays here and there at the center position and hopefully limiting the amount of plays that he lets up. But uh, Schmitz has been pretty solid. Jalen Hyatt in this draft class is the one that you point at and you're pretty much saying, hey, third round picks are starters in this league. When you look across the field, when you look across the, the landscape of all these teams, the selections you make in the third round, they're supposed to be impact players that start for your team. Jalen Hyatt, you trade up for him in the third round, you select him, and he's not even getting targets. He can't get targets on your team. Whether that be Jalen Hyatt's fault, I do believe half of it is his fault. But you select this guy in the third round, you trade up for him, and he's not impacting your team. 
He's been known as a deep threat since he came into the league. And at this point, he's only a deep threat. And we're not even throwing the ball deep. Jalen Hyatt is not, a, is not a player that's making any type of plays on this team. Whether that be the coaching, whether that be Jalen Hyatt, whether that be the quarterback, Jalen Hyatt is not impacting this team. And you traded up for him. These are fireable offenses. When you look at what happened with Evan Neal, when you look at what happened with Josh Azudu, Marcus McKeithen already, Jalen Hyatt, fireable offenses. We're not walking away from these drafts with talent. That is the problem. These players are not performing for us. They might go somewhere else and perform for, for other teams, but they're not performing for us. Joe Shane, that's on you. Let's flip to this, this year's. Now, this year's does look a little bit promising. Malik Neighbors, Tyler Newman, Drew Phillips, Theo Johnson, and Tyrone Tracy with along Darius Massaw. Listen, this is the first draft class that's looking like in a total haul, it should be a good draft class. But does that stop you from potentially moving away from Joe Shane? Let's be honest. So there's a couple hitters from this draft class, but the jury is still out on them. We're, we're eight weeks into the season. We still have to see what this team, you know, does with them next year, what this team does with them in the next coming weeks. Overall, the jury is still out on this draft class, but it looks promising at the moment. But who, what, who, who thought that the first two draft class didn't look promising in the beginning? <laughs> who didn't think that? And here we are. So let's see what happens with these draft class. Let's jump into free agency moves. Now, the biggest thing and, and the biggest reason why this video is coming out at this moment is because you let a guy in Saquon Barkley walk away. You let him walk away. You didn't want to offer him the money that he wanted. You felt like you, you should place that money elsewhere. Well, let's look at what this team is right now. This team has two wins to their name. Two wins, two and five. You decide to spend your money in the offensive line. You decide to go draft a, a, a wide receiver and you're shifting the offense into more of a, a, a pro offense that you're throwing the ball around the field, potentially adding more weapons and Daniel Jones should continue to exceed. Saquon Barkley had more yards than your whole offense did. In a game where the stakes were high, we already saw a clip in the offseason with John Mara saying, you know, I don't want to see Saquon, you know, go to the Eagles. He goes to the Eagles and he kills us puts up more yards than we have altogether. When you make a move like that and you walk away from a guy in Saquon Barkley, knowing what he's done for the team and knowing the playmaker that he was, when you move away from that, you're saying, hopefully this team continues to get better. We got worse. We got worse. Our offense is not better than what it was. This team is not better than what it was. There's nothing that we can take away and feel like with Saquon walking out the door, this team got better. You, you didn't use that money on him. You used it elsewhere. The offensive line has looked solid for the first couple weeks. But once again, Andrew Thomas goes down and everything looks out of sorts already. Xavier McKinney looks like a top three safety in the league right now. You let him walk. Now, he got paid a big bag. But overall, does he look like he's worth it for the Packers? I think they would say yes. I think they would say yes. The Giants only have one interception to their name. McKinney had five in the first five games. I think you would say you would want Xavier McKinney on this team. We let him walk. When you look at it, something that will always go down for Joe Shane's history, no matter what it is, is going to be Daniel Jones' contract, handling that free agency. Daniel Jones getting paid a lot of money, and you can go back to my videos. I put these videos out for a reason. They're on the internet. I have no shame in revisiting those things. I was happy when we got it done. I was, because I thought my quarterback was going to continue to ascend. You want to know the difference? I don't get paid millions of dollars to run this team. Guys like Joe Shane do. Guys like Brian Dayball do. And hey, what do you know? Daniel Jones hasn't lived up to it. A lot of people take laps around it. A lot of people clown us for it. And that's how we feel as fans. Whether I believe that it was the right move or not, I don't get paid millions of dollars to make these moves. Joe Shane does. So when this hits the fan like it is right now, Joe Shane is the one that takes the accountability and probably should be gone after this year. I'm just being honest. It's a fireable offense. People complained about Gettleman and what he did, and that's why Joe Shane is having a tough time right now. Well, guess what? Gettleman drafted Daniel Jones, Joe Shane extended. Two different regimes, same problem. And who chose to do it? The man himself. Fireable offense, y'all. Fireable offense. Some of the trades, let's talk about the trades. Some of them has worked. Then you got trades like, once again, Jaden Hyatt. You have trades like Darren Waller. I mean, Boogie Basham just got cut and say what you want. That's a couple different assets that we gave up that now this guy's cut. The trades have been hit or miss. 
overall, when you look at the state of this team, I think you got to look at the trades that we made, the draft picks that we've made, and realize in year three, we're not continuing to improve. After a, a solid year one, we make the playoffs, shock everyone. It's been downhill ever since, and it's supposed to be the opposite. It's not supposed to be this way. After you give a guy like Daniel Jones a contract, the next year you're looking for a quarterback. That's a bad look. That is a bad look. Joe Shane, your time is running out. I believe it continues in this trend, man. I don't see a way that we keep him. I'm going to be honest. Some people are going to be split on this decision. But overall, you have to look at the results. I don't care what it is. Show me the results. Show me the numbers. Show me what this team is. This offense right now is bottom three in the league. Putting up, averaging 14 points a game. That's sick work. In a, in a league where you got to put up points every single week, this Giants team the last two weeks put up a combined 10 points. Combined 10. Joe Shane, your time has come. Your time is running out. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments.